It seems to be universally accepted that those earliest blue stripe revisions of the 1176 audio compressor sound warmer and richer than the later ones, and especially the ones that came after that. There are two simple reasons why. The earliest revisions used FET transistors as the input transistors for each stage of the compressor, and a single-ended output stage coupled with a UA5002 output transformer. Later revisions kept the same output configuration, but replaced the FETs with standard BJTs. The revisions after that changed the Class A output to push-pull design, and also used a simple output transformer merely to balance the output signal. The only thing which I find superior on the later revisions is the meter circuit, which uses TL071 op-amp driver that makes them a lot easier to calibrate and provides a more stable operation. I've recreated the Reve and designed a dual-channel PCB with everything on a single board, including the power supply and input and output transformers that all nicely fit the 2U REC enclosure. After reverse engineering the original output transformer, I've acquired the PCB type bobbins which make life a lot easier because they don't require any lead wires, you just solder the taps to the metal pins on the bobbin. The UA5002 output transformer diagram is a bit deceiving because it shows the primary winding, brown-black, as a singular winding while the secondary is drawn as two separate windings. But in fact those are mirrored bifiller windings and there is a hidden center tab between black and brown, which is tied together internally, so there are no external leads attached to it. Primary and secondary are in 1 to 1 ratio. There is also a tertiary winding, violet grey, which is also in 1 to 1 ratio to the previous windings. It is wound as a simple thinner gauge winding and used for feedback. And finally there is another feedback winding which is in 1 to 10 ratio to the rest of the windings. The bifiller primary and secondary are split into two sections. One half is wound first and then the two feedback windings are wound on top of it. Then as a last winding the second half of the bifiller primary and secondary are wound. We will start with the first half of the bifiller winding which is 450 turns. I don't have two different colors for the bifiller pair but it doesn't really matter as long as you make sure to connect the correct ends to their respective places.
Next we wind the simple thinner gauge feedback winding with 900 turns. I just hand feed the thin wire because I don't want to reset the bifiller pair I have in the automatic feeder. Then I wind a smaller feedback winding with both wires of the bifiller pair soldered together. The feeder is set at double spacing as well to cover the whole bobbin. And finally to finish off our sandwich we wind the second half of the primary and secondary which is another bifiller 450 turns. Once that's done, I insert all the E-laminations first with the exception of the two pieces which are inserted the opposite way. They act as a mountain brackets for the I-laminations. I've ordered perfect length screws for this transformer, but they arrived too late for the shooting of this video, so I needed a little help from the Dremel tool. It's time to pot the transformer. Recently I've switched from beeswax to this motor winding enamel which is very strong and now I can hear a voice of Bill Putnam talking to me. If you've enjoyed this video give it a like, subscribe and click the notification bell. I would like to thank all my supporters and Patreon supporters especially. If you would like to learn how to calculate and wind your own transformers check out my webpage for audio and mains transformer calculators and tutorials. You can also check my 3-in-1 transformer calculator phone app, which is available on the Apple App Store. Thanks for watching.